everybody, and welcome back to the interview series with myself and Jamie Heasley for SME Businesses. We're delighted to have Grania O'Keefe on today. Uh, Grania's fallen on from our brilliant interview last week with Tom Gannon, and I'm really looking forward to this interview. Uh, Grania's really, really good uh, business stories to share and how her business pivoted during COVID-19, which is what this series is about. So Grania's a head chef at Clambrassel House and also one of the directors in Bougie Burgers. So I think it's really, really good uh, for anybody that might be in that kind of uh, restaurant, coffee house, anything like that. Actually, anyone that has any business whatsoever has to really listen to Grania's interview today to get loads of different knowledges uh, that she's going to share. Uh, Grania, welcome. Thanks for coming on. Uh, we, we are giddy today, aren't we, Jamie? Just a touch. Just a touch. Just, just uh, a touch, giddy. So. You know, I mean, the sun is, the sun is shining, um, you know, and in fairness, Grania and her team have put me in a giddy mood because they are delivering, you know, really good chocolate, uh, hot chocolates, really good coffees, burgers, pastries, all sorts of delights to, to the area that I live in, and they've, they've definitely changed the game up. And as you can tell, I've probably had about 20 copies, but that's what happens when you're up at half six in the morning with your daughter. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, really, I'm actually really excited because the reason I am really wanted to talk to Grania was about how they were, from my opinion anyway, and, and maybe yours as well, Paul, and it seems like they were one of the first when COVID hit to really, really pivot their business and and kind of change the business model or, or, or give a different offering um, that seems a bit counterintuitive to, to, um, to a, a restaurant or a business like theirs um, and do these boxes that we're now seeing all the restaurants do. But yeah. that's why I want, I want to like, where did the idea come from? It's so simple, how they execute it um, and, and where, how they came about it. But I suppose to, to, to get there, you know, how did the whole idea for uh, Bougie come, come, come around? Great. Okay. Uh, you, you sound like a robot at the end of that game with the Wi-Fi. But <laughs> anyway, sorry, Grania, welcome. Fill us in. How would you do it? What you do? And then uh, I said, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Matt. I'm the head chef in Cam Russell Heights restaurant, and we're a Michelin Bib Gourmand restaurant. And we're currently closed due to COVID, but we're hoping to reopen soon. Right. And I'm the founder director of Bujo Burger Joint. So I've been working with Bujo for five years and we've been open for three years. So they approached me um, when they were op opening the, one of the owners um, and he brought his business plan to me, met me while I was on a break from work, was having a coffee and just kind of, he was like, do, do you want to, you know, come and help me open a burger joint? And I was like, uh, no, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> And then, but he told me, you know, I would get to meet all the suppliers, the farmers, the producers, pick everything, design the whole menu and get to work with like people who are leading. Like I worked for two years on, on the, the beef blend alone um, and just getting to work with like food technologists and scientists and meeting farmers and all that made it really, really worthwhile. Um, we also have a three star rating from the Stingle Rational Association in London. And I created the policy, it took that as well, it took two years, um, and it's the highest rating you can get. So for like a little burger joint, it was huge. Um, and we designed the whole restaurant around it. So all our packaging and store is compostable. Um, all our, everything in the kitchen is designed, you know, based on sustainability and the menu around our suppliers as well. Um, so it was, it was a really interesting journey. And I'm, I'm so glad that I you know, didn't just think, oh, burgers, <laughs> get out. <laughs> um, and actually decided All right, you could just the work from home and I'm going off in the back here. That's okay, that's okay. I can't hear it in fairness. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'll have to, I did this in the last one, Grania, and it'll probably be in the edit, I don't really mind. I have to go and let someone in. So we'll be back in a second. Away, you guys, we'll continue talking, Jamie. The good things, a new norm, work from home, and these things happen. Grania, I never knew that. So again, I'm not, I, this is why we're doing these uh, interview series. To me, I uh, didn't know about Bujo until I actually seen Jamie have it on his Instagram stories. Uh, and then I was like to my wife, we got to get this. And it became a ritual in our house every weekend that we get the delivery in, cook the burgers with the kids, use the paddy. And it was like an education. But I didn't know that all that backstory. That's amazing. So it just goes to show when you start off a business and you really put the effort into all those different things, it can shine through in the end. You must really see that now, do you? Yeah, we do. And like it comes across like I think in, in, in our team, um, like when a guest comes into the restaurant, you can, you can see that like everyone in the restaurant really believes in what they're doing. They love what they're doing. And it's not just burgers and fries and shakes. Like they're amazing. <laughs> yeah. But there's, there's so much more to it. Um, and it does really come through 
when you're in Bujo, I suppose before, you know, when we actually had like people in the restaurants eating, we just have like little signs up in the restaurant for, you know, saying who our suppliers are. And sometimes restaurants will be quite, you know, secretive about who, who they use, like who their suppliers are, but we really proudly display them on the wall. Excellent. And we're really, we're really proud of our, our suppliers. And, and you might be asking then, from a business plan point of view, you mentioned that one of the guys got to contact you before and ask you to join the team and then two years with the beef and kind of the business plan from the kitchen, everything you got involved in. When COVID-19 happened then, or how soon did you take? Did you always do the boxes? Again, we don't know. I don't know because I'm only a customer of yours since, obviously, since COVID-19. I don't live in the area. I didn't know the restaurant. Now everybody knows about you. So what like what, what changed or how did you change so quickly or what did you do? Um, so I think it was on the, around, was it the 13th of March when it was yeah. kind of, all the restaurants were shutting down and Tom Bartle House was, was closing the, the Saturday was our last service. Um, and then in Bujo, you know, we, we just kind of were sitting down and we said, well, like, what are we going to do? And we had always had it. Um, like even before opening, we were always going to do a meal kit box. Oh, okay. It was just part of our little plan, like, well, you know, there's always a million things that people have in their heads for ideas. Um, and then we just kind of revisited that and said, well, you know, we have our beef, our buns, our sauce, our cheese, our pickles. Why don't we just put them in a box and people can cook them at home if they can't come to us? Um, so it was just, it was kind of that simple thought. It was, then we, we went on, we kind of, we did um, a WhatsApp ordering system. So there was no one in the restaurant, but we set up a, a permanent WhatsApp call on the outside of the restaurant. Okay. That was connected to the, the till. So someone would walk up to the window inside Bujo, place their order, call out their card number. We'd do it all, type it in, and then, you know, uh, they'd, get, they'd get the food and walk off. And it went really well. And that was within one day that we did that. And people were like, you know, this is, a, this is an amazing idea. But for us, it was... While it was the starting point, it just it just wasn't you know a sustainable thing to do. There was, you know, we were going to have to manage queues and just there was a lot of things that we have to get around. So we said, well, let's just let's try the meal kit. Let's just do one off. So we just got a compostable box and just put all our stuff in it. And then we went to our designers. And they did up, you know, the the insert that you get tells you how to cook it and just some notes for me and. And then we just started doing it, delivering to Stanley Event only. Um, and then Dublin two and Dublin four. So it was me and the owner going around in a refrigerated van. And I was like, just, so we, we had like all of the dresses and Google Maps, which is a nightmare. Like it's, people I just the right air codes. And I was like knocking on wrong houses. And <laughs> going around for hours. Um, but it was really nice. It was really nice. So I just, you know, ring the doorbell, put it down somewhere, stand back wait for someone to come out and then just got to meet so many of the, the regulars that live in Sandy Mount as well. Like people that, because I'm not there in, in visual all the time, I don't really get to see them. Um, just having a little chat and this is when lockdown was, you know, heavy and no one was really leaving. So the people were really loving it and they're like smiling, really happy to get their little kids. Yes. Um, and then we expanded outside of just some two and them four. So we got we got a little bit more people involved, like a couple of drivers um, with refrigerated vans. I was still going around in the van delivering them, um, and then we we said we were just getting so many people. Um, a lot of like we get a lot of regulars who come every month for a limited time offers, and they come from all over Dublin. And they were saying, you know, I'd, I'd really love to get the box, and we said, let's let's just let's go the whole of Dublin. So we did, and we, we, we got a, a courier company. Um, I stopped delivering myself. <laughs> um, and then we, we, at this point, we weren't uh, operating in the restaurant at all. Like, you couldn't get a burger in Bujo. Um, no guests were allowed in the restaurant. We, did, we weren't doing takeaway or delivery. We were just doing meal kits. Um, and there was a lot of work involved, like a lot of really quick work. Like, we have a house of consultants. And, you know, I was going to her and saying, what do I need to do to make this as safe as possible and get approval from our home inspector uh, to be able to, to give these into people's homes? Because, you know, you always have to be really, really careful with things like that with food. Yeah. And um, especially if you're doing something that you haven't done before. Um, so we, we, did, we did everything that the home inspector said. We got our lab tests to see the shelf lives. We got the approval. Literally, like, we were waiting um, to, to assemble the boxes. We were waiting on a call from, like, 
for the EHO to be like, yeah, okay, because we were like raining all the time. I said, like, did you go through the, the documents that we sent you? She was like, okay, yeah, approved, go for it. This all looks really good. And then it just went from there. Um, and we did that, I think it was six weeks of doing the boxes and not actually opening the restaurant. Um, Do you mind me asking, go on, yeah, how, how many, and uh, really interesting this, like I said, uh, phenomenal service, use it like religiously. It became a ritual in our house that we got the delivery in the Friday that kids got excited, teenagers, and it was brilliant. Did you sell more burgers through this than you would have done in the restaurant in a day? Like, I just, I have not asked too personal question, but I presume you did because you can only fit so many people in the restaurant to give at times. But I, I everybody knew had a bougie burger. Oh, can I actually follow up as well? Like, uh, as you don't have to tell us the numbers as well, but as a, as a as a revenue model, is it is it has it been good enough for you guys to go? Actually, we will potentially keep this or do it every so often going forward. Um. So we were definitely selling more uh, beef, say, and, and buns and, and sauce. Because if you think about it, instead of, you know, one person coming into the restaurant and buying one or two burgers, it was like 10 or 12, isn't it? Buying 12. Yeah. Um, but it's, I don't know, like people would see, you know, how, how many boxes you're doing and think, that, God, they're making a fortune. It's like, I mean, you, have to, you have to factor in a lot of costs, like the packaging, the, the, the staff, the delivery, <laughs> the delivery, which you know would, would be would be a big part of it. Um, and to answer your question, Jamie, yes, we are already going. Or we're already doing one delivery a week now. Um, so the restaurant is back open, uh, only for click and collect, and we're doing one delivery a week. So every Thursday we're doing one delivery. Um, and we could easily do more. Like there is more demand for us to do more, but just because. We have, we've split our teams into two teams, like an AM team and a PM team, like based on the WHO guidelines for, you know, managing uh, teams and staff for safety. Um, so we don't want to overload the restaurant and the, the guys with, with too much to do. And we need to, we need to focus as well on, on, you know, getting the click and collect right and, and making sure that, you know, the people in Sandy Mount who, who have always supported us are, you know, kind of, our, our number one priority in terms of guests. And how, how did you, or how quickly, you probably touched on this while I was dealing with actual working from home problems here, uh, but how, how quickly did you, um, or what was the mindset of, of you and, and uh, the owner of where you kind of said, okay, restaurants are shut, you know, we're pivoting into, um, we're going to do these boxes, okay, and then actually, how, okay, how do we, uh, you know, how do what does the new model look like when we open up the restaurant? This uh, the click and collect that your system that you're using. You know, um, was it was it very quick? Was it very proactive? Very growth kind of what can we do kind of mindset? Or did you have to get a bit of go through a bit of struggle of oh this is the way we always did it. We're never going to survive again. You know, what was I'm kind of curious on on how you guys approached it. For the click and collect or for the for the or for, for both, you know what I mean? Like what was the mindset throughout the whole journey is what I'm really kind of curious about. Um, do you know it's it's actually one of the most important things is that we're really blessed to have an amazing team, like incredibly blessed. And it's been really, really positive and adaptable the whole way through. Um, there wasn't any time when, you know, someone had an idea and said this might work that would, you know, no one listened to it. Everything was was put on the table and everyone was really hands on. So for example, like myself, the owners, uh, the manager, and all the key staff were assembling the boxes. And when I say assembling the boxes, I don't mean putting stuff in them. I mean actually building the compostable boxes. Um, like one day we did like hundreds of them and like your hands would be like tiny little cups and then you're constantly putting hand sanitizer on them. Um, uh, but the, the team just came together. There was there was no roles. There was no like superiority. It was just everyone getting done what they needed to do for the restaurant to keep going. Um, and yeah, that it's, is, it's just brilliant. I love it. Man. I, love, I, love, I, I love. I love as well. It sounds like going that you have. Um, I'm not going to say a real flat structure as, as a company, but that uh, one of the values is is like it's either transparency or open openness or something like that, where where you communicate really clearly to everyone and everyone buys in and everyone knows what's happening um, and is on board and, and there's an open line between between everyone it sounds like and that really brings the team together particularly through uh, 
a stressful moment like this where you come together, it's all hands on deck, you know, and this is our plan, this is how we're going to execute going forward. Yeah, and there's there's also like uh, it was a realization that you know this this is bigger than than just Bujo, like this is affecting everyone. Um, and when we were still open in the restaurant in the beginning, we were doing we were working with Feed the Heroes, so we were sending meals to like local guard stations, down to DCU and the labs, and giving you know meal kits and the um, the burgers and stuff just. Uh, to kind of help out that way and then moving on from that now that we're doing the meal kits one of the weeks we did um, an optional donation on our website so you could just click a button when you when you bought a kit and you could donate one year 50 to be the heroes and the support from from the guests who were buying the kits was, was unbelievable so they I think in total it was almost just under a thousand euro that was donated through the boxes of people buying them and Abuja matched it um, and then we donated 2,000 euros for the heroes. Um, and then just like seeing how supportive people, even at home, are and, and with things like that, it's just kind of keeps pushing you to, to, to go forward and move on and, and not get stuck and, you know, be worrying about how are we going to get through, you know, this many boxes or tomorrow. It was, it was kind of, you know, just, just moving just forward. Doing very good. That's a great idea about the deliver the, the one euro fifty or tonight to the to feed the yeah. heroes. It, it's taking everything. I think that's what what's after shown. Seven James saying already on a, on, a, on a previous interview that you know Ireland is built on SME businesses. Um, and that's what this interview here is all about. Trying to help SME businesses. But when you fought, like you're just coming on and kind of going, yeah, we just did this. It doesn't seem to have phased you in any way. They just kind of, but yeah, we we'll, uh, just have to do the boxes and it just took off. And what, what I was what I was kind of worried about, I'll just give you the, the frame of, the, of, of myself as a consumer for your one of your customers, is that we've already said, my wife, Sarah, and the two kids, well, two elders and teenagers, the babies, well, but the first thing we plan to do, and we didn't know about Bujo, but the first thing we we're going to do was go there as one of the first restaurants, and, and we, don't, we don't live in Carrick Mines. So we never would have gone to the restaurant. So I'm sure by opening up to everyone outside of Dublin, everyone said, I wonder what the restaurants like because the cooking themselves are great. Imagine what's like to get a chef cook and a proper, <laughs> <laughs> a proper cook. So uh, hopefully that works out that everyone is thinking like me that, well, we must visit this place that we've got service off during COVID-19 and it keeps the transition. Hopefully bring more customers to Sandy, Sandy Mount. Like, you know, it'd be brilliant. Yeah. Think it's... Sorry, Brian, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, you go. I've I forgotten. Kinda, kinda, <laughs> you go. Uh, yeah, I was kind of wondering, do you think it's important from um, a brand point of view? Because your brand is so strong. You know, um, I always, whenever I walk, walk in there, I always go, how do I get one of those T-shirts? Because I, I love the branding in there, right? But, but how, do you think You're it's really important? just basically that? asking one of our guests for a free <laughs> T-shirt. You know what? Will you, will you stop? We'll get you one. <laughs> I want to do. Oh, to No, but I'm I'm wondering, is it important that people try and find a way to keep their brand um alive and and relevant and and adding value through whichever which way they can find it? Do you think it's important for from a branding perspective? Because it seems like brand and positioning the brand and being part of the community and adding value is very important. Uh, you talk you talk about sustainability. Um, you know, is it, is, it, is it an important trend, an important thing for the business? 100%. Um, 100%. And there, there, there's kind of two sides of it. One is that you're, you're handing over, you know, your product to people at home. And, you know, you're, you're giving them access to something that, you know, we, we, we didn't know that we were going to be giving to people. And so you're kind of also putting, you know, your, your brand in their hands because they're making the burgers at home. They're posting photos of it. And, you know, whatever they're posting and they're tagging Bujo, it's, you know, that's what the Bujo burger is, even if they made it. Um, but it's it's so important to keep your brand kind of out there and keep rolling with it and keep reminding people that you're there because there's so much noise in the industry at the moment. Um, like, it's, it's deafening. Like, it's all over social media and it's just in the news. It's everyone's doing, you know, at home deliveries and meal kits. And what will happen is if, if you're a restaurant who... Who hasn't maybe adapted and aware maybe just couldn't and you have to stay closed that you might find it harder when you reopen to to get your 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 regular customers back in because you know they're discovered other places and they're they've gotten used to having meal kits at home and you need to keep your your kind of presence strong and remind your your guests that when you do reopen and when you can have them back in that 
you know, you're going to welcome them with open arms and, and you're going to, you know, really look forward to doing that. Right, you might be asking, you guys keeping in contact with then um, your existing customers or your new customers, so let's say me, for I take a new customer, didn't know about you, um, until obviously Instagram and COVID-19, obviously Instagram's one of your best, your best platforms, obviously, but are you going to, like, is there a strategy now in place to keep in touch with people like me to draw me in, obviously, back then, so I'm going to go there anyway, uh, but... Are you planning on trying to fish out to a wider pond now and rather just keeping the Sandy Mount um, and, and bring people to Sandy Mount to, into the restaurant? Because, like I said, you've already got us on the hook. Uh, so is there a strategy in the background there or what he's planning? Um, so at the moment, we're, we're just kind of focusing on, on Sandy Mount. Um, like it's, our, it's our priority. And so we've introduced uh, two new offerings. Um, so before, it was always just burgers, shakes and fries. And... Now we've gotten in bread forty one pastries and bread, um, and we have cloud picker coffee. I'm feeling hungry, Jamie. How about you? <laughs> I, swear to God, I thought that you were doing a collab with with, with uh, uh, bread forty one. Bread forty one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When I saw that, I I, I swear to God, Paul, I was like, Gina, look, off that out here now. <laughs> and, you know, and they're amazing. Like the stuff, like because I know I own down in bread forty one. I just went down and I was like, listen, I need. I need some amazing pastries and I need some amazing bread. Like, what do you have? And can you just stand them off the food for me? It's like, yeah, no worries. And like, they're so good. They're the best. In my opinion, they're the best pastries in the country. And then um, Cloud Picker Coffee, we got a barista in. Mikey's work with Cloud Picker. We got like a brand new barista machine. And like, he's in there making all types of coffees. And he's, he was even, he was putting like tonic water into coffee one of the days, trying that out. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on there, but we'll see. Um, and then we're doing like toasties as well, which are really, really special. And they're like smoke a bean cheese, like limerick ham, pickles, caramelized onion. And yeah, then whole the breakfast as well. Time, yeah. We have I'm a breakfast sandwich. Stop talking um, about food. Actually, <laughs> really, really, really you know, you touched here. on something there, Gronya, and, and it, it came up when we were talking to our previous guest about collaborations and how, okay, your marketing budget might be gone because um, you've had to, you know, a lot of people were like, okay, where do we cut costs here? We've got to be really efficient going forward, right? And um, use social media as a way that's kind of free content to create, I suppose. But um, you came up with the idea of collaborations and, and different brands or different restaurants, you know, kind of like what they did in the clothes industry you know supreme might um do a collab with louis vuitton or something like that do you think this is um a trend that we might see going forward in the restaurant world of of restaurants doing collabs like you're doing with bread 41 and cloud picker and we might see that with others um yeah like in in Bougie, we've actually done it since the beginning so every month i'll do a collaboration with either a supplier or a DJ or another chef or like a few notable ones would be like Nick Solare who, who has a, a me channel over in um, New York. Um, I, Sarah Hanrahan, I come and done, she did a veggie one. Marcus, DJ, did one. Um, and so every month we do a collaboration and sometimes it's just highlighting, you know, one particular ingredient and in producer and then other times it's just highlighting, you know, people and their creations. And, so we were always, we've always, you know, been of the mindset that collaboration is, is, a, is a really great tool to give the locals and our guests something new that they might not have been able to get before. Um, and also just, uh, you know, for us, like for me as well, like it's, it's fun, like it's, it's interesting. And it's, it's that, you know, constant moving and doing new things and just expanding the menu and also, you know, your audience with it as well. Very good, very good. So, uh, 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 Jane, we're seeing that trend in fairness, aren't we? Your collabs working well between different people to keep their brand alive and to try the thing for the consumer. And um, it, yeah. it seems to be a common trend, uh, which is great, uh, as long as it keeps, uh, as long as everybody keeps winning other customers or, uh, you know, loyalty from people, whether it is even through an Instagram like or is something that will help them build their own platform or a new business, which is which is brilliant. Hey, uh, Groy, what do you hope now on the back of COVID-19? You mentioned you're still going to do the meal boxes probably once a week. Is that right? Yeah, uh, and then the restaurant will be back open. This and the hope in the next wave or the next kind of phase of lockdown or coming out of lockdown. Is it a when do you hope the restaurant to be back open again? Um, so we've actually um we've we've took taken out all the furniture um and we've redesigned the, the entire restaurant. So we had builders in. They came and they built this little hatch um 
and you've gone to Bouja's Instagram, you'll be able to see it. It's, it's, it's pretty cool, like it's just really simple. Um, so it's a little hatch, after turf, and it's really clear. There's only one way to walk in, one way to walk out, and it's click and collect only. Um, so what we've done is we've made all of our ordering platforms only click and collect, and for the simple reason of, of safety, safety for the guests and safety for our team. So there's no queues and even, you know, you want a coffee in the morning when you leave your house, go and click and collect, order coffee, pastry, breakfast sandwich. By the time you get to Bujo, you'll literally walk in, take it and then walk straight back out. Um, and we have um, they're like a thermal scanner. So when you walk in, you know, you don't have to touch anything and it just like scans your temperature and tells you, you know, if you're at the right temperature or not. And because we kind of invested in all of this, we're not in a rush to, I think that the open date is the 29th of June for restaurants. And that's when, you know, you can have people sitting back in, but there's going to be social distancing. So it'll be one meter or two meter. And there's a lot of things that you need to think about as well with, you know, how do you serve them? And how often, you know, do you need to do checks in the restaurant? And we have our manager to, like already created a, a policy for that. And like a 20 page health and safety document based on that. But we've, built, you know, this kind of retrofit at the restaurant for not having guests in the restaurant, not rushing back into having them in until we can do it properly. Um, and then just, you know, building on what we're doing now with Click and Collect. Right, very good. Uh, so I suppose, Greg, you might be asking, who looks after the marketing? I love when I did see on Instagram, you have a kind of chipboard, but I think it was that we've missed you or what was the message? I can't remember off the top of my head now. Uh, what's your story for the coffee collector? There's a big sign, I think, when you walk into your... Uh, oh, how we've missed your face. Yeah, how we've missed your face. I thought that was brilliant just for, for local uh, for local people because obviously you wouldn't have seen them. But who does your... Are you doing everything? Have you got, oh, you've got a small enough team. No, so like... How, how are you managing to hit everything? <laughs> Sorry, what I want to try and get out with this interview is how, to, how have you done it and how are you managing to actually nail everything you do? So first to do the, 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 the kind of the box workers at home and trying to get them in the boxes and get them out to everybody. First to do the like the click and collect from what I can see like the coffee, the thermal scanners, getting builders in, getting your marketing point, Instagram. Like you'd almost swear COVID nineteen was three years of what you guys have achieved in a few months. Yeah. So how have you done that? Um just by it's just a team. It's just a, it's just a team of really positive minded um just professional people who just have really good ideas um and are forward thinking. Like the things like the meal kit was always going to be part of the plan. Click and collect was always going to be part of the plan. We just had to push it forward a bit. And I think what we're seeing in Bujo and what we're realizing is that a lot of things that we have planned already, um, we just needed to push them forward because of COVID. But it's right. always going that way anyway. Like click and collect is always going to become a big thing. Yeah. Uh, home, home delivery of, of meal kits is probably going to kick off eventually, maybe in a couple of years. Um, and it's yeah, just come from being around, you know, intelligent people who know what they're doing and that the owner you know, would, would do the majority of social media as well. And it's just got a really good eye for detail. Um, and just, they're all just like good people to work with. That's brilliant. Jamie, is it mad how, uh, if we go back to, you just said you're going to be interviewed Tom Gannon last week. He was our first interview series. Probably would have seen it by the time we, we released this one out. But Tom was talking about how they had something in their business plan uh, to go to other markets yeah. later on this year. And you now had the, the plan to put the boxes together and the home delivery, and then you just brought it forward. So go show you how important a business plan is and being able to visit where you want to be in year two, year three, or even eight months down the line. So if something does go wrong, you can bring that forward. That's that's mad, Jamie. That's what they're coming across in the first interview is that the, the, what oh. really made them pivot and help them pivot was something that was planned to happen later in the year, but they it, just brought it, it forward. It really, it really stands out to me how... Um, and, and growing Trump in here if I'm wrong, but how people have, okay, this is what we're going to do very much to now. We're going to execute like burgers done really, really well, right? And that, that experience. But you also had, okay, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, uh, er, the next steps, the next product lines all lined up in terms of where you wanted to go to, the roadmap essentially. Uh, but then you got sideswiped, you know what I mean? And everyone got sideswiped by, by, by COVID-19 coming in but how you're able to kind of adapt and then you kind of move, okay, can we do the next thing? Yes or no? Uh, if it's a no, okay. Can we do the boxes? Yes, grand. We'll do the boxes. Okay, what can we do now? Okay, we can do click and collect actually. We'll have to change up the restaurant, da-da-da-da-da. You know, okay, we'll have to do online. We'll have to educate people on that, that front. 
And I think, you know, coming back to what Tom was talking about, it seems like it's really important. It, it's, I don't know, this is where I'm asking you. Is it really important that you have that roadmap, but that you're not exactly, you don't have to stick to it stringently that you've got to be able to flex in and out of different ideas? Would that be fair? Absolutely. It's like, it's key to have a plan. And that goes for anything like in life. It goes for if it's your career or it's business or what you're going to do for the day. Like you, you need to have some sort of plan and some sort of idea of where you're going. Um, because, you know, otherwise, how, how do you get there? And we're, you know, um, we're very lucky that a lot of what we had already, you know, started to do with, say, building some and collect and, and putting that into the website is, you know, something that we really needed now. Um, but even going forward, you know, the, the plan will be based around, it's not going to be based around the 29th of June. And, you know, let's just, yeah. you know, cross our fingers and hope that it's one meter instead of two. And it's going to be, you know, extended far beyond that to what if this happens again? What if there's a second wave in the winter time um, and we can have people back in the restaurant? You know, and, and that's for me what I think restaurants should be focusing on now when they're trying to reopen. And a lot of them have lost a lot of money and their staff and they're going to be kind of scrambling to, to open and, and try and get guests back into the restaurant. Um, but then, you know, if, if there's a second spike and they have to close again, like, will they be able to manage that? Should yeah, they do? Such a good point, Grainne. You no know, one said that to us. Uh, this is why these interview series are really good. Uh, Seth and Jamie doing these for a while, talking to each other about businesses. But you're right, having to prepare for a second wave in case it does come. What does that look like and feel like? And that's a very bad so I wouldn't even thought of. Now we don't have in my office. We don't have clients coming anyway, so it's different for me. But that's a really, really good tip for people. It's yeah. just that. Make sure you keep your eye on what ha may happen again and how quick you can adapt back. Yeah, it's the the kind of mindset of, you know, like fail to prepare, prepare to fail sort of yeah. thing. Like I know that we don't really know what we're preparing for at the moment. I would say, if anything, prepare for, you know, this potentially happening again. Um, like, you know, have a positive mindset, but, you know, be, be also realistic that, you know, there is a chance that, there, I think experts are saying, there, a second wave will come in winter. And, you know, you have to adapt now to be ready for that and to be able to pivot. So even if you can't pivot now and you can't adapt, you know, have us that further down the line, if it does happen again, that you can. Excellent. It sounds Excellent. like as well, Grainne, that you shouldn't, you, you almost have this um, don't settle attitude. So even when things were, go were good, you were kind of thinking, you know, okay, what, well, you know, we're not settling on that collaboration. We're going to do another collaboration with someone else, you know, um, and you're, you're always thinking of different ideas. And even with COVID-19, you're like, okay, um, we, we, we've done the boxes, we kind of, we nailed that down, a lot of work, but we nailed that. We've nailed down the click and collect, but however, we can't just rest on this. We've got to keep thinking, how do we evolve this? How, how, do we, how do we adapt to scenarios we don't even know what's coming up? And, you know, there could be another Black Swan event, we don't know. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it is, so we did the, the meal kits, and it was great, and, you know, it was a lot of work, but it went really, it went well, and, you know, we liked the end result. Um, but you know, then everyone was doing the mail kits, and um, we wanted you it, to be. Did you get annoyed with that on you, or were you? Did you take it as a compliment, or were you like, God damn it, everyone's doing our idea now? No, like um, I think I'm pretty sure that we were actually the first ones to do it. Like I don't. The best. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> like even I think Shake Shack in. In America, the Shake Shack are huge. They brought out their meal kits even after we did ours. Um, so I, I, I'm pretty certain we were the first, but it, it wasn't a thing of like, oh, look, everyone's doing them. Let's do something else. It was, okay, we've done them, but, you know, we want to refocus uh, on, you know, getting the restaurant open, even if it's for click and collect. A lot of that is um, also a, a, a people side of things as well. It's, you know, we, we wanted the team to, to stay engaged and to, keep moving and you know when you have a team and they're just assembling boxes and you know putting things in boxes and then the boxes are getting sent and then there's more boxes it's you know they're gonna get bored of that yeah. as well That's so it's, it, it, was, it was a people thing and also just we do like to keep you know moving and I'm already working on on menu ideas for next year like you know that sort of thing which we might have to push forward you know who knows what's gonna happen next week um, do, you mind, do you mind me asking, uh, Bruce was said this at the top of the interview, but you were a uh, top chef under 30 at uh, Warner, right? So how have you 
adapted so well to be, I'm not trying to not having a go with chefs out there, but you know, sometimes you see a chef, they're just good in the kitchen, they're chefs, that's it, they great menus and great service. But how, like, have you done any business courses? Were you good in business studies in school? Like, how have you adapted so well to the business world to be able to change a restaurant and what it is? Like, from where you just came from, it's just, I just, I just think it's a phenomenal story. Um, it's just, it's just the, the people, like, it's not just me, it's, it's the whole team. It's, you know, mainly the, like, the manager and the owner and the guys. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just, it's literally everything. It's just always about surrounding yourself, you know, by right people. And even, you know, I'm in, in the next while going to be going to see, you know, like a, a career guidance person. You know, one of those people you would have avoided when you were in school. <laughs> like kind of, like a coach for like a, a what do you want to do for the next 10 years and how are you going to get there? And it's, you know, even the best athletes in the world need coaches. Um, and it's important, you know. Do you know any good athletes? Like, what? Do you know any good professional athletes? <laughs> no, not really. Or former, former, I'll take former. <laughs> None of my Former life. great athletes, sorry, yeah, yeah. Sounds like you need an executive coach, something like that. But, 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 but I'm actually, so funny enough, well, this is not a plug for me, but I, that's, that's what I, I'm, I'm doing. Um, I'm uh, having had the experience of working with coaches, performance coaches, while um, playing. That, that, you know, I found a great benefit, and that's what I've gone into now. Um, and I think you'll probably see the benefit of it, and I think that's why you're leaning into it, because it, it's good to work with someone to help you kind of create that, you know, one, three, five, ten year, ten year plan and, and, and breaking it down and, and, and finding out what it is you really want to, to achieve. Yeah, and it's it's important as well when you're when you're growing with with, with different businesses and you know you're, you're working as part of the team to to also, you know, let them know what your plan is because you know they have to build your plan into their plan. So are we gonna see like a rolling slide of like your 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 coaching website underneath here. <laughs> he never stops. Uh, you know, uh, he, he said to give you a free coaching session for a t-shirt. Uh, so that's the deal we're going to go Fair on deal. today. Fair <laughs> deal. Fair deal. Can we just cut that out? Can we edit that no, part out? No, no, it's definitely staying in. It's, it's going to be all over LinkedIn. Uh, oh, very good. Uh, well, this is a I suppose, in, in, in the, in, for the, the purpose of time here, we wanted these interviews to be snar- uh, short and snappy so people can get really good content out of them and get a few business tips. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, and I must congratulate you and the whole team. And one thing you did say, it's, about, it's a team effort. It's not just out to you, and we know that, and we appreciate that. Uh, fair play to you for shouting out, whether it's the owner, the manager, the staff, or people who put boxes together. Uh, businesses only survive on the team that they've built around them and how adaptable those people are. Uh, so congratulations to you, uh, career to date. And um, I must say, it's been... It's been great hearing the story because it's intriguing. And I said it to Jamie from day one. So I know Jamie uh, knows you from actually being around, from the area. So Jamie, thanks for getting Grania sorted uh, and getting on the show. Well, I, you know, I think, look, she, she's a testament uh, to, to herself and the team. Um, and I think that's the real, that's one of the big takeaways, isn't it, from this? That, yeah. you know, um, SMEs, they might feel like they're on their own a little bit and um, that, you know, Get a really good team around them. Reach out to your network. Reach out to your community. Uh, Growing it with with Fred Forty One, for example, you know, or who, whoever the equivalent might be. Reach out to those people. You know, use them. You're not you're not on this on your own, and that's what we're doing. This we're trying to share these kind of stories with people to to give them ideas and 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 ways and means that they might kind of you know one thing might just click for them and help them kind of get through this and come out the other side. Yeah. Uh, Grania, thanks very much for sharing your story and give us a time. I know you're obviously busy, so it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks a minute. Thanks, Mel. It's good chatting to you. Thanks, Grania. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. But well, Jamie, that was a good chat, wasn't it? She's brilliant, uh, Grania, wasn't she? I thought I was, I was blown away by how much they've achieved in such a short space of time. Like I said it to her one stage, I swear they were going three years, but you know, the stuff they've changed in their business. I, I was amazed, you know, how, how laid back they were, you know, when the world yeah. is, is on fire, how, how laid back they have been throughout all this and how they, they executed so well. Um, first to market with the, with, the, with the home kits, and then how they kind of moved that going forward into, okay, let's go back to our core business and go click and collect and say very true to their values. So, um, you know, really, really kind of impressive uh, company um, and, and individual.
and I should mention the team a few times. Obviously, you can see how important it is to have a good team around you and buy in. Like I think, I think for especially for Tom last week as well. I think people are very they say the team, but a team needs a leader, as you well know. Uh, and teams need to be built in a certain way that they can handle the uh, turbulence like a COVID nineteen or like a global pandemic. So I think that's testament to Grania and obviously the owner of Bujo as well, which is great. Uh, mad how I, I just I just scary how the good business that we're interviewing like last week obviously had Tom Gannon on. And then this week, Ron, you Keith, but the two of them mentioned the business plan, Jamie. It's a backbone. Yeah. You know, people don't spend an awful lot of time in business plans, but it's the backbone. Like, you see how both of them, Tom said he brought his, you know, his expansion into UAE and also over to the UK up to speed up like nearly 12 months earlier, 18 months earlier in one case. And then, Ron, yeah. you brought the home kits out quicker than expected because it was in the plan. So, I go show how important a business plan is for all businesses. Yeah, and, and, and that, you know, they, they never kind of rested on their laurels, that, you know, and, and they could have very easily done that. Really successful uh, burger business, you know, and they're, they're hitting it out of the park. Let's just keep doing this. Yeah. They had a roadmap, you know what I mean? And, and you know, there, I'm sure there's other things in that that they, they can't do, and they're not getting too hung up on that. So they're kind of, okay, what can we control? Yeah, we can do certain things here. What can we influence? Yeah. Okay, we can influence, we can do certain things. And then they have, they're accepting certain things that, you know, okay, we can't reopen the restaurant as it was or yeah. whatever it is, you know, and I think that's really powerful for, for them to kind of come from that mindset. And the other thing that stood out for me, Paul, um, was collaborations. Like collaborations yeah. seems like I stood out from the first two uh, mm -hmm. conversations that we have. It has a really uh, great way of providing value to their customers as well as coming up with new ways to um, provide different propositions to people as well. Yeah, no, it does in fairness, and it, it, it's it, it, it's it's just it's just about how the both business is both from the first interview or second interview are so different. Let's see what Tordon has to throw up for us. Uh, it, it's always yeah. interesting to see what people are doing. Uh, Jamie, look, I suppose, sorry, one last thing to go for anyone that's watching these interviews here. If you think you know anyone that you want us to get on, or you're somebody that wants to get on and share their business story, do get a contact myself or Jamie via Instagram, LinkedIn, and the normal channels. Uh, but also, what I will say about this last interview, it was great the way Grania really expanded through Instagram. Didn't really mention Instagram that much because she doesn't run the Instagram page. So again, it shows that although the Instagram yeah. had a good part to do with the business, leadership and the business plan had to be the foundation before they launched on Instagram. I think that's a really a really good thing to, for anyone out there to consider. Instagram is not going to solve your problems either or social media. It has to be a good business plan and uh, they're, they're having a really good team around you, which is interesting. Obvious, but interesting. Uh, Jamie, uh, pleasure as always. Talk to you soon, pal. Take care. Cheers. Bye.